Hi there, Renee Asi in Low Massachusetts, and there's no such thing as love at first sight. So you'll hear people. I just knew after four hours I have to be with this woman for the rest of my life. Or recently, Dr. Jordan Peterson in an interview, of all things a Catholic interview, was like, I knew the moment I set eyes on my wife, I was in love with her for like the first time. All of that is absolutely crap. It's a lie that men tell themselves the lie that other people tell other people. So you may actually remember the first time you saw your spouse. I remember seeing the first time I remember, but I wasn't in love with my husband. I just remember the first time because I ended up dating the guy and marrying him. When I first set eyes on him, I didn't know who he was. He didn't know who I was either. I could have been a complete psycho, right? So if he said, Renee, I knew the moment I set eyes on you, I was in love and I was going to marry you. I would be that insane because we were both working at a supermarket as cashiers and we were just flirting and I flirt with everybody. So there's nothing special there. So I was commenting because <laughs> love is a story that has to be built. You have to know people. You have to flirt. You have to get a feel for things. You have to date. You have to meet their family. You know, like when my husband and I used to do marriage prep and help out with pre-cana. So in the Catholic church, you have to take like marriage prep classes. And you, you do worksheets that were just privy to the engaged couple. But you would talk about like how your parents fought with each other, like argument styles. Like how do you handle stress? How do you respond to certain situations? Like what happens when your father-in-law gets sick? What are we going to do for the holidays? <laughs> you know, who we're going to visit, how we're going to, like one of the rules I have in my own house with four kids who are now having, you know, girl, one's engaged and having boyfriends and girlfriends. There's 12 days of Christmas, Christmas to Epiphany. So we don't have Christmas on Christmas. It's okay. We'll have Christmas well, during one of the 12 days of Christmas, between Christmas and Epiphany. And that lays off so much. My, my kids aren't stressed out about Christmas, by the way. So back to Ben, Ben Mills, this young guy who's 23. I think he's right outside of Boston near me. And he gives out the best relationship advice. He gives out better relationship advice than Jordan Peterson. That's right. Because he knows what it's like to be friend zoned. He knows what it's like to constantly be in love with somebody who doesn't want to be loved back. And dealing with that. And like, oh, like you know what? This person doesn't want to love me. Break it off and move on. You know, don't don't fight for them. Don't live in the friend zone. It was amazing advice. As a young man, Ben Mills was giving out better advice than Jordan Peterson. Because I remember being 19, 18 years of age, flirting and dating and things like that. You know? And one of the things I'm thinking back about when I was 18 years old. And um, I broke up with my high school college boyfriend. He was a saxophone player. A, he was a music major. He played the saxophone in a ska band. And I broke up with him because I just realized we weren't going to be married. He actually brought up the word marriage. I was like looking, but I was shocked. I immediately broke up with him like a few days later. And I ended up, unfortunately, hooking up with another guy, which isn't the best. But a few months after we broke up, he just randomly calls me up. And he meant well. He was like a very sad situation. And he was like, what do I need to do to get you back? What do I need to do? Who's going to fight for me, guys? And I was like, nothing. Because if you knew what I needed after 18 months of dating, you, knew, you should have known what I needed. Because you knew who I was as a person. You didn't give me what I needed in 18 months. What makes you think I, he was going to somehow fight for me back? I knew who he was. He is who he is. He's not, I wish this guy, him as best possible in life whatsoever, but we were not meant to be married. We were not meant to be married, by the way. There was no way we were going to work that one out. I found somebody who could. And um, so I'm not trying to like be mean to the guy, but I know what it's like to have a guy call me up trying to fight for me back it didn't matter nothing he was gonna say or do was gonna get me back because like I was dating him for 18 months and like he wasn't 
just emotionally he he wasn't treating me as a whole person as i basically say it the only person like my husband treats me as a whole person but that doesn't happen see i saw you the first time i saw you i just knew after four hours i just knew to, to love a whole person takes time it takes time you have to figure them out know them by the time you then by the time you get engaged then you're figuring out the paperwork it's like a review you're not learning anything new you're just reminding yourself this is why we're getting married and when you're filling out the paperwork between the two of you about like different personality styles and things like that so you know as a now as an older woman with four kids who i would like to one day to have married and have them have grandchildren and be very stable i work out and i'm very flexible because especially if i like the guy like my daughter's engaged to a wonderful man I'm going to be as flexible as possible for that relationship. I'm not going to get in their way whatsoever. It's amazing. It's lovely. Anyway, you can't hurry love. But you don't want to be fighting for her in that friend zone either, right? Love you all.